The Eritrean period, corresponding to the 21st century BC in uh, southern Mesopotamia, is one of the richest in documentation, not only in the ancient Near Eastern history, but also in the whole antiquity. The centralization of power that followed the conquest of Urnamma and Shulgi, you can see here uh, a small map, um, reflected also in the economy and in the administration, and an in, uh, incredible amount of written documentation was produced, varying from smallest accounts to really big summaries of uh, extensive transactions. The biggest cuneiform from databases that we have up to now contain more than 91,000 documents just for a period of a uh, few years less of uh, one century. And the vast majority of them uh, consist of administrative, economical, and legal documents. Yeah. Here you can see an example, pertinent to copper, I hope you can see it, um, of how the bureaucratic machinery worked. Whenever any kind of material was brought into the central offices, employees had to produce, at least theoretically, a tablet related to the delivery, here called Mundu. Afterwards, when these materials were handed over to a worker to be processed or as a salary, uh, the office had to produce a receipt tablet, attesting the quantity and quality of the products leaving the warehouses. On his side, the worker could write a delivery tablet and later, new receipts when he had to give uh, his copper, in this uh, example, to farmers as kind of uh, uh, instruments. And then back when the farmers had the instruments uh, gave back to him for to be repaired or for some other reason. So uh, adding all these tablets, we can, uh, we can find the balanced accounts. So, uh, the balances of the incomes and the expenses of every year of every office or person. One of the principal themes the bureaucratic machinery had to deal with was obviously food. And food was dealt by with uh, uh, four main kinds of text. The receipts, delivery text, messenger text and letter orders. I will present the four typologies and then focus on the last one. The most common uh, category of administrative, administrative text, not only for food, but and for the uh, most common document in the whole Mesopotamian history, is a receipt attesting so the exit from the warehouses of various products, among which food, plants, and animals. Even considering only one of the typologies of receipt, the most common, we have more than 11,000 text. So the, um, the temples and palaces were really, really concerned about what left their uh, warehouses. So they are characterized by the form, uh, the verbal form shubati, here, that means he received. And you can see here the structure. So the products that were uh, the focus of the text, who was given the products, who was receiving the products, and so shubati, he received the text, the, um, the products. The other kinds of receipts are not so easily uh, countable. Uh, we have almost 11,000 uh, shubati text, almost six, uh, almost 7,000 ziga, and so expenditure text. And then the other two verbal forms that characterize the text, uh, so he sees the end, uh, a exit, so exit of the product, are not so easily um, countable because they are so common, we cannot say for sure this is a, a delivery text, this is a receipt or just a text when somebody goes out of his, uh, of his house. But uh, nevertheless, we have more than 18,000 documents delivery, um, dealing with uh, receipt. On the other side, we have the delivery, delivery text. So a uh, text that attested uh, something was coming inside warehouses. The textual structure is also here quite easy. So the product, in this case silver, delivery, mudu or muku, and then the date and other uh, optional uh, information. These texts are uh, less attested, almost uh, 7,000 document also here, but uh, still they are quite numerous. Here is an example of a mixed text when you can see both the verbal forms, uh, delivery and receiving. So it's kind of an account text. Uh, and so the number, uh, the total number of the text should lower a bit because we have text with both kind of activities. Uh, another kind of text is the messenger text, similar as a concept to the uh, 
to received, it was used in a different way. So when the messengers uh, went around in the in Mesopotamian land, uh, they had this kind of text and they could receive from the postal stops uh, uh, some products that were useful to their nourishment or their life. Uh, in this case, we have beer, bread, and sesame oil. We have the name of the receiver, the task he was doing, so going to uh, Susa, uh, and then well, the official and the date. And so the structure is also here quite easy. The, the product that was that are uh, consumed, so containing the test and then consumed uh, by the messenger are of three types. Beverages, the only beverage a test is beer because it was more caloric than water and water was probably to be uh, found somewhere else. We can find the normal quality of beer and the beer concentrate, so you have to add some water to create a Sumerian beer. Then you have uh, um, elements, mostly bread, flour and salina. Um, they were yeah, al also cereal products and um, quite rare were instead vine meat, fish and onions. Uh, and the texts are also contain some other products that were not eaten, so sesame uh, oil and soap that were uh, useful for the cure of the body. The last technology concerning uh, food is the letter orders. The letter orders are uh, way less than the other texts. So we have almost uh, 600 letter orders. Uh, and they are a different kind of administrative text because they are dis disguised as letters. So in this sense, you have the sender, the receiver of the letter, and then the order, the task you have to, um, to accomplish, in this case, uh, give something, and these are all, all the products you had to give to this person, Lukidia, the receiver. So you have silver rings, clothes, oil, sesame oil, an ox, mix a small kettle. Obviously, a lot of these texts pertain to food. These are the categories uh, of the products uh, that were contained in the letter orders. All the transactions deal with these 14 kinds of products. And between these, we can see three categories that are food or almost food, like animals. Okay. The 14 categories are subdivided in this. Uh, with this percentage in the 600 letter orders. And you can see that uh, cereals, food and animals represent more than the half of the transaction. So almost one on two letter order contain food or food related element. Okay. The first category is food and beverages. Uh, we have 32 distinct elements about this category. The most attested is fruit with dates that were uh, almost ever dried dates. The word used is different from the word used for uh, fresh dates. So we have zulum, this word was really common in Sumerian times, probably because um, dried dates were easy to, um, to keep. Then we have uh, less attested pomegranates, apples, and figs. Figs were um, Numerate, num, num, let's say, uh, things were mentioned in strings, so probably also here we have dried uh, figs and not fresh figs. Within the processed cereal products, we have bread, obviously, and cakes, but they are really not attested. Uh, beer, so, is the most present um, cereal byproduct, let's say, but even beer that was really common in Mesopotamian diet is almost unattested. Uh, in any case, we can find seven distinct categories of beer, and we have to have the beer concentrate that we found before, and the beer bread, so a kind of bread that was melted with water to create beer. Dairy products like ghee, cream, and sheep milk were liquid or solid cheese, and were all, also always um, mentioned in small quantities partly because of the nature of the product and partly because of the short, um, let's say, uh, lastingness of the dairy products. The last small group is, uh, we can call it spices, although we have different things uh, like honey and salt and sesame. Uh, the most interesting thing about this uh, group is that we can find uh, one request of 60 kilos of cumin in one time, so an enormous quantity. 
uh, the greatest contribution to the Mesopotamian diet was uh, came from cereals. So we already see, uh, seen uh, bread, beer, and uh, cakes, but we have also non-processed or semi-processed um, cereal product. So the most attested uh, in all Mesopotamian texts ever is simple barley. It was given also as ration. Uh, almost one third of every request let, uh, written in letter orders uh, concern barley. Uh, the most attested variety is a simple barley, but we can find also barley mentioned with different quality or uh, different purpose. So we have just harvested barley, good quality barley, and sowing barley, flower barley, prey barley, barley as offering, as food ration, barley as for animals. Uh, barley was uh, so important that uh, it was used as a kind of money in Sumerian times. Uh, and so we cannot say every, for every single text uh, if barley was destined to be eaten immediately or if it was destined to be treasure and then exchange it with something else because it was a value, uh, value measure. In this text is always ambiguous, this uh, usage. We know that in the end all the barley had to be eaten, but we cannot say it before. We can say something about the interest bearing barley because it was used as money as I said and so we are sure that this is a financial use but for all the other attestation we don't know it at the beginning. Uh, the other kind of uh, cereal that we find are also raw cereal, wheat and emmer and processed cereal like semolina, bran and various kind of flowers often not attested or not uh, recognized. Sorry. So since the edible plants were included in the first group, the last group is the animals. And the most attested animal uh, is a sheep. It was really common in Sumerian lands. We can find 32 different, uh, different kinds of animals, unevenly divided between sheep, goats, bovines, equines, and fishes. The most common was the sheep, attested in 14 different qualities. Uh, that can designate a simple sheep or dead sheep, carcasses of sheep, which were clearly destined to be eaten immediately. Then we have lambs, maybe utilized as food, maybe utilized in the um, sacrifices, and then sheep recognized by other qualities, so the fat tail sheep, sheep uh, the fattened sheep or fertile sheep or male sheep, and so on. Goats were not so uh, not so attested. Usually they were mentioned as simple goats or since they were associated with sheep uh, as a similar entity. Five minutes. Perfect. Uh, they were called uh, uh, small cattle and that can be also mixed. So we have uh, all together sheep and goats to get, uh, together. Bovines were way more attested, especially oxen. Uh, the, sim the simple ox is the single most attested animal in the letter order. And then we have other kinds of qualities. So old oxen, love oxen, celebration oxen, calves. Probably there were just different stages every oxen had to pass through. Equines that probably were not eaten. We just have donkeys used for draft or as a piece of burden. And then fishes that were usually roasted and so eaten. So here is a summary of the food subdivided in the letter order. So two thirds cereals, 20% uh, animals, and shorter percentage food and beverages. To conclude, we have four different kinds of uh, documents to uh, administrate the food. Two are specular, so received and delivery text. We have the same. Uh, sometimes we have the same transaction uh, from two different point of view. So the giving and the receiving person. We have the messenger texts that were similar to the received, but where they were used in different ways, so for just for uh, special tasks. While the receipts uh, were used by the institution, the, me the messenger texts were used uh, outside the institution, so where the mes uh, when the messengers were in the land. Instead, uh, the ledger orders were used uh, both in the institution and outside the institution. Letter orders and food are tightly related. We have seen that more than half of uh, letter orders uh, are dealing with food. 
And in general, uh, geographical distribution is general equal, but we have two exceptions. The animals come at most from Pusrich Dagan, a city that was uh, really important in animal trade in Sumerian times, and the uh, Bali comes at most from Girsu. Uh, if you want to outline a survey of 21st century food, letter orders are a reliable instrument because of their excellent ratio between number of texts and variety of edibles. We have seven kinds of beer, nine of barley, 14 of sheep, six of ox, five of donkey. And they are not easy to find in a corpus of less than 600 documents, coherent stylistically, chronologically, and geographically. On the opposite side, there are many elements that, comes, that appear just once in these documents, and some that are co uh, really common, uh, like other bakery products, or grapes, olives, uh, drinks, and wild animals that are never attested. So we have to uh, we have to uh, conclude that uh, some other kind of food, some kind of either, uh, animals were administrated with other documents or were not administrated at all. Maybe because they were bred and cultivated in the family, so they didn't have to move these products into other economical uh, units. <coughs> 